Horimiya is done. The final Horimiya episode 13. Did this romance anime deliver? Was too much skipped? There is a ton to love here, so smash that like and subscribe. And let's dive into this. My thoughts on the final episode and anime overall. Definitely post any of your likes and issues down below. Horimiya got super praised from anime people early on. You mean you have a romance anime that actually gets into the relationship? You know, instead of keeping it vague, not getting a kiss, or even leaving it up to a sequel, that'll never happen. Now for winter season, you had this almost decade long manga getting turned into an anime. It tries to cram over 120 chapters into 13 episodes. So did the anime succeed? I will say Horimiya feels pretty refreshing. What a unique idea, actually getting the prized couple together. Or if you want to look at another recent example, Super Speed. Recall Tonikako Kawaii, the main character in that one got married to the first girl he just met. But anyway, getting into what I liked, what Horimiya did great. First off, it actually feels like a real relationship, a Japanese couple. At least compared to the US, this is different. In Japan, you do have the confession culture, so you may or may not be too close to the person who confessed their love to you. You saw a good example of this in the actual anime with Yuki's situation. Moving into the actual dating, naturally, you're gonna have bumpy spots along the road of love. You gotta feel each other out, play around and experiment with what works and what doesn't. There will be times you don't see eye to eye. Times you know you did wrong, but at the same time don't really know how to admit it. <coughs> Hori. All of this helps to develop and shape the relationship. I especially love Hori being the super insecure one. Not to say Mia wasn't without its own self-bashing. And even by the end, after what, a year or two together? They outright admit, I still don't know almost anything about you. Another thing to love was Hori and Mia playing off each other. And I'm sure you'll have your own opinions about this. Let's admit it, Mia really was not the stereotypical about what a man should be like. At least not from a western perspective. You had the guy being scared, being thinner framed, not too aggressive. At the same time Mia had traits that I think a lot of anime people can relate to. Almost being an outcast, being alone, not being too outgoing. Likewise, Hori actually embodied a lot of traits that you would typically expect from the guy in the relationship. She was often the one fighting, being angry, liking horror movies. It was fun seeing her being violent or aggressive when she needed to be, while at the same time having worries that any other person would. Like being insecure about her body, overthinking their relationship. We've all been there. By the end of everything, it was great to see how the lovebirds not only changed, but also helped each other grow due to meeting each other. Something else that really caught my attention was the kinky Hori. Oh yeah, she definitely has some darkness in her. Whether you like her freaky side or think it's weird as hell. I'm just glad there's a normal romance that tackles this. It still feels like talking openly about some kinks is way too taboo. It seems like it's almost never acknowledged, it's played for comedy, or worse, you have people thinking it's weird than kink shaming. This actually reminds me of the recent cursed redo of Healer anime. Did you know? It's actually been confirmed that this has a higher than average female viewership. Who knew so many girls would love this hugful anime? And personally for me, for Hori, her voice actress, which was a cherry on top. Of course, she's famously known for Asuna, she's done Zero Two from Darling in the Franks, and to my surprise, Iris from Violet Evergarden. That one was a shocker, she has quite the range. Which by the way, congrats to her on her pregnancy. Getting to Mia. Physically and mentally, this guy had such a drastic change. Especially visually. Recall his full look at the beginning. Keep in mind, this is Japan. You would stand out so much. Either way, I really enjoy seeing his struggle and finally him being able to move past his former self. I don't know, but for me, it felt like it hit so close to home for me. Like, I never hated myself in junior high or high school, but seeing how far I've come, I definitely wouldn't want to go back to the person I was at that time. I think most of us could relate to this on some level, especially years after high school. And let me not forget about the father of Hori's papa. What a chill dude. I want to get a drink with this guy. He acts more like Hori's older brother rather than a parent. And then when he initially met Mia, what a complete switch up from what you would expect a parent meeting a guy, one that's obviously interested in your daughter. I really wouldn't mind getting a full episode with only him trolling this upcoming couple, which you actually do get a ton of in the manga. And let's not forget about Yuki and Toru. Seems fitting comboing these two together. Yes, they are the second couple you're rooting for, or not, your choice. I actually did like the dynamic between the blonde Yuki and Toru, especially how they developed after Hori got snatched up by Mia. Anyway, touching on the extra last episode, episode 13, I was really curious to see how they would handle this. They jumped straight from Christmas over to the graduation. Initially I was watching this, getting a little frustrated seeing how much of the friends were being showcased, while at the same time it seemed so little of Hori and Mia. But surprisingly enough, double checking with the manga afterwards, this is actually really faithful. 
the Christmas slash New Year's episode already set their feature in stone. So I guess, what else is there to add? For me personally, it would have been real nice to get at least an on-screen kiss. Which, come on, I know it's Japan, but what is up with anime? They got the sexy time tease months ago, but he can't give us a solid on-screen kiss? Nope, only hold-handing for you. So kinky. And besides the main two, you might as well have given us something more concrete for Team Yuki. This is your last chance, so why not? Show us more! So, do you have any similar things you loved or some things I missed? Let me know down below. Alright, switching over my dislike or issues. I do have some nitpicks, but I feel this major one sums it all up. You know, I thought this anime was called Horimiya. Don't get me wrong, while I really enjoy seeing these two lovebirds being lovey-dovey, blossoming early on into this cute couple, once their midnight fling happened, there really was not enough Hori or Mia. So yes, a huge negative with both of them becoming side characters in their own freaking series. I wouldn't mind this 50-50 split. I'd barter for that. But come on, it went to like 10 or 20% in some of the later episodes? And I get it, I know the business side of this. Cloverworks was only given one season, only 13 episodes to start and finish. Which is why I have to ask, why waste time on characters who don't matter? Especially the green dude and his sister. When that came up in a later episode, I was like, who the hell are you? And my god, they actually spent an entire episode on him. For the blonde Yuki and Thor, I get it. They are the second couple you're rooting for. Hell, I even really enjoyed Remy and her quick flashback. But to waste almost an episode on this Z-level character, especially when so much of Hori and Mia stuff didn't already make it into the anime? In hindsight, the anime should have only mostly focused on Hori and Mia, especially highlighting their fun and lovable moments post being an official couple. Any side character should have been just that, on the side, instead of that chapters where this couple interacts with all of them. A good chunk of fat that could have been chopped out with a sharp knife was the green dude and his D-level subplot. Cut out Akane past him asking out Yuki. And while I felt Remy and the president were handled better, I would trade that in a heartbeat for more Hori and Mia moments. You don't have time to fully develop them anyway, so instead it just comes off half-assed. Which gets on to the next issue, was the anime too short? As always, you have 13 episodes, one season ordered by the production committee. They actually timed this well. The manga ended like, what, two weeks ago? But honestly, there should have been more. They could have actually gone the Bunny Girl Senpai route. Perhaps the season two was out of the question, but why not bundle four or five episodes into a movie or theater OVA special? I can tell you in March, they did have a Horimiya shop here in Japan. I managed to slip out during my super busy schedule. And let me tell you, that was packed with the little high school girls buying up everything. So yes, thinking business-wise, since that is a priority, making more of this could have done wonders. So let's get into it. How much of Horimiya was actually skipped? Let me try to give you an idea. Episode by episode, I did try to map out the chapters covered. Each episode covered anywhere from three to six chapters. Except the anime jumps around a lot, especially towards the later episodes. I practically gave up after episode 10. You have to have the anime mixing in past and future chapters. After episode 12, which was the episode with the Christmas and New Year's chapters combined, they freaking jumped to their graduation in late March. So what do you know, a four month time skip. Holy crap. It is weirder when you notice what actually takes place in the manga. The Christmas event happened on chapter 63, the New Year's on 64, which is around the halfway point of the series. Anime-wise, this was freaking episode 12. The anime for episode 13, the final one skips over to the graduation, which is around chapter 123 and 24. This means the Horimiya series actually spent like half the story in these last two or three months leading up to their graduation. In other words, you have this key multi-months period where the anime practically skips most of it. You know, it feels like half the manga was skipped. This includes decent chunks of content removed from the chapters the anime did cover. The manga actually has a lot of chapters fully dedicated to developing the signed characters. That works in the manga, since you do have more time for Horimiya to breathe. Let me actually give you some notable anime cuts. The Kyoto School Trip, only a picture in the anime. You might be familiar with Japanese schools, there is always one major trip that happens. Often it's Kyoto. The School Festival, also only a picture in the anime, which is another staple of Japanese schools. Mia having to do the swimming exam and trying to get out of it. Mia licking Hori, trying out some new kinks I see. The guys having their own slumber party. Come on, this would have been a fun half an episode. And freaking Valentine's Day with the Hori Mia couple. This by far seems to be the biggest missed opportunity. But no, let me give you more of the green dude and his sister. Besides some events removed, you did have complete characters cut out. This included scenes with the little brother and his crush. I think you saw the little redhead, but did she ever get a line? That clinging girl. She actually had more scenes of development. In the manga, she even actually visits Hori's home. 
probably not the best of ideas. I shall let you know that potentially there is some hope. The Blu-ray is coming out. Like often is done, especially for romances, you do have an audio CD drama included, which I'm betting you they're going to be adapting some skipped over chapters here and there. And who knows, potentially some OVA only for the Blu-ray later on would be real nice. Anyway, overall for my final thoughts, where the hell is my kiss? But really, my nitpicks aside, even with Hori and Mia getting sidelined in the later episodes, this is still a pretty enjoyable romance anime, especially for one of its length, only 13 episodes. I do say that with perhaps the bar in romance anime not being set too high. I mean, chime below with your favorite romance anime. I think this would easily make top 5 or top 10 for anyone's list. Let me also mention that I did technically somewhat binge the manga. I was hoping to do more videos on this series. But unlike hardcore manga fans, just putting it out there, I do not have those years and years of investment in the series. So as a new fan of the anime and a casual one of the manga, I can tell you, this anime feels very enjoyable standalone. As you're watching this, I'm sure you'll notice some of the issues or nitpicks I brought up. Places where the anime could have been really tightened up. And if you did love the Horimiya anime and are craving more, I would highly recommend manga. You got twice the material waiting for you right there. Hell, I wouldn't have even checked out the manga if I wasn't enjoying the anime so much in the first place. I definitely had Hori and Mia's voices shining through as I read. Also, let me just say, since it's the same studio, at the very least this wasn't like the Promised Neverland disaster, where 15 volumes got abridged into 11 episodes. Yeah, Cloverworks, you better watch it. I am predicting that Cloverworks may gain this reputation for rushed adaptations. Either way, best of all for the Hori Me anime, it promised you a couple, you got them in a relationship, and even teases you with much more by the end of it. You know they're gonna get married. That's gonna come sooner or later. Probably sooner. Which is why, to me, it almost felt like the Christmas episode was meant to be the anime finale. Episode 13 was just bonus, like frosting on their wedding cake. If you do want to check out the manga, I definitely recommend you check them out on Bookwalker. They're an awesome sponsor for all your manga and light novel needs. Just use my code FOX and get a sweet $5 discount. Link below. But anyway, definitely share your thoughts on the anime below. Did you love it? Did you have similar issues? Anything I missed? Are you anime only or a manga reader? Or just say hi. Don't forget to like and subscribe to make YouTube happy. Check out my SEO movie trailer breakdown and I'll see you guys later.